Welcome to another video of Inside the Digital Pros and No Code Academy. And in this one, we're going to get all dynamic and we're going to pull our values in from Superbase into Sync Fusion charts with inside our Flutter Flow application. So we're going to extend the previous example that I created, which had local data with inside Flutter Flow, but this time we're going to go all dynamic. So hopefully you got your sleeves rolled up. Let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so here we are then within our empty Superbase project. Let's create a brand new table. I'm gonna call this one stats at the top. Let's take off row level security. Not interested in that here for this sample. Let's add some columns in then. So the first one we're gonna add in is period. Now that is gonna be a time a stamp. So just choose date and time, no time zone. That's fine. Now let's add another column in. This one's just gonna be a min. And then we're gonna give this one then in, in two. And then I'm gonna add another column in, which is just gonna be max. And let's give this one an int two as well. Uh, we can give these a default value of zero. That is fine. And that is good. Just hit save like that. And then our table will be created with the schema now ready to take receipt of some data. So let's now think about how we're gonna generate the data to put into this particular table. Okay, so we moved over to our trusty friend chat GPT and I put in a prompt here for it to generate some CSV data for me for the month of March 2024. Now, of course, if you're watching this in, in a different month, then make sure you use this prompt uh, and change the actual date as well to be the month that you're in. So let's just hit the kind of the send message. Let's hopefully chat GPT will go away and create that CSV for us. Let's see what it produces. Okay, so it looks like the CSV is being produced for us. It's just gonna hopefully output me then the link. There it is. So I'm gonna download that now. And we can now head over now to Superbase and uh, upload that, uh, that file. And hopefully we can then insert all of those records into our database. Let's go and do that now. Okay, so with inside our table, hit the insert, go to import data from CSV. Where it's got upload CSV, just click browse. And there it is, just choose a stats, uh, stats March 2024, hit the open, and then pretty well much. There is the period, so there is our date, and then here is the max and min, just import that data. And then there are all my 31 rows added. So that's looking pretty good. So that's pretty well much with Superbase set up. So let's now move on to part two, where we'll start working with inside of Flutterflow. Okay, so here we are then in Flutterflow with the cloned project. So what we're gonna do first is set up Superbase to work with this particular project. So let's move over to Superbase now. Here it is, let's move over then to then the project settings option. Let's go to API and we're gonna to need to get the project URL here. So we're just gonna copy that. We're gonna move back over to uh, our project. Here it is. Let's go down to the cog here, move down to Superbase and we're gonna enable Superbase in our project. We're gonna put in the API URL there. Now let's pop back over to Superbase here. Let's go here to this particular project API key option. Just hit copy here, move back over, and then we can paste that then into the anonymous key. I hit the get schema. And then of course, here's our schema that comes back now from our project. So we kind of got everything we need configured now in Superbase. Flutterflow will kind of respond to that and will now allow us now to make database queries into Superbase. Okay, so next up in our project, what we need to now do is we need to set up some page state variables. Now we're gonna need two variables because we're gonna be using a loop with inside the action flow editor to kind of iterate over all of the data that comes back from Superbase, but, but we're gonna to need to kind of track the kind of the position that we are with inside that particular loop. And we're gonna to need to kind of work out, okay, one, where, where are we, but how many rows have we actually got coming back from Superbase? So we can keep looping until we kind of get to kind of a match between the current row that we're on and how many rows we've got available in order for the loop to kind of break. So what we need to do is we need to move over to then the page the state option up here and we need to add a couple of fields here. So choose add field. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one in here called current row like that. And this is gonna be an integer and just make sure that nullable is turned off and the current row default value is gonna be a zero. Let's add another field here and we're just gonna say a number of rows just like that. And uh, take the type again, it's just gonna be an integer and it's not gonna be nullable and this is gonna have a value of a zero as well because that's gonna be our kind of our starting position. Just hit confirm and they are all created for us. So we can now move on now and we can start now creating those actions. 
Okay then, so back then within the home page, hit the get stats button, move over to the action flow editor, open up that, and we are now ready to go. So the first action that we're gonna add in is our back end query to Superbase. So let's just do a search for back end like that. I could have done Superbase or something like that. And we're gonna choose the query rows option, just select that. And then with our table, it's the only one that we have and that is stats. And now this is where we need to add the filter in itself. So what we're gonna do for this particular site I'm just going to pass in a filter where I'm going to kind of say, look, just get a small selection of data. So the data that I've got in my database at the moment is for the month of March. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of get maybe a few days before and a few days after to then present that with inside my charts itself. So add the filter and we're going to choose the field name here and we're going to base this on the period because that's the kind of the date and time column they have inside this sample. Choose period and then my relation. It's going to be greater than or equal to, so just select that. Now with the value, let's have this one selected. Just going to scroll down here, go to custom functions and choose date with date adjustment. That's the one that we've just created. Let's just scroll down here now. So the input date I'm going to pass in is the current date and time. So just with this selected, move to global properties and say the current time like that, hit confirm. But of course I could have like hard coded the date, date and time or if I'm filtering from a date picker or something like that, you could use any of that. But I'm just, for this sample, just gonna take the current time and then work out a kind of a starting position from that. So with the number of days, I'm just gonna say, well, here's my current day. Um, let's go say maybe minus four days earlier. So just hit confirm there. Uh, in fact, sorry, I just need to put these values in as well. Let's just go down here and say no further changes and hit confirm like that. I'm just gonna have this selected. I'm just gonna click on the three dots to say copy variables. We're gonna use that in a second, but just with a slight adjustment. Let's add another filter in and go down to the field name here. And we're gonna go to period like that. Now the relation here is gonna be less than or equal to like that. And then our value, I'm just gonna come here, I'm gonna paste that in here. I'm gonna come down here, I'm just going to maybe put say, I don't know, uh, say four days later. So just put a positive value in and just hit confirm like that. That should be everything that we need for our back end query. In fact, I'll tell you what I need to do is I need to put an output here. So this is just gonna be stats output like that. Just press enter, that is good. So the first thing we now need to do here is we now need to set our first page state variable. So we're gonna kind of do the back end query. The data is gonna come back and it's gonna return back X number of rows. So what we need to do is we need to store the total number of rows that come back in our query, store that in the page state variable because we're gonna need that to do that check in the loop very, very shortly. So let's add the action in. Let's do a search here for state, update the page state choose the field and this one is gonna be then the number of rows, just select that and our select update type just needs to be then set value and with our value to select, we can then move down here to the action outputs and you can see here, here's our super, uh, super base result set. Let's come back, choose stats output and the available options will be the number of items. So just choose that. That's all that we need to do, just hit confirm. That's now all set for us. So now here we go then with the loop. So add the, press the plus here, add the loop in and our loop action at the top here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go in this kind of loop here until this condition is met. So go to conditions, choose a single condition. Now the first value is just gonna be then our page state variable. And we're gonna say the number of rows and hit confirm there. And we're gonna say is not equal to, and then choose our second value here, which is gonna be our page state variable, which is gonna be the current row. So you're gonna wonder where do we get current row from? We're gonna set that in just a second, okay? So with that, just hit confirm. So here we're just saying, look, if the number of rows is not equal to the current row, then keep this loop going. So now in, let's move into this particular bit here. If I just move that up a little bit, in fact, I can't here because I just need to move it up there. So let's now work on this particular action here. So this is where we're kind of in this loop now, and we now wanna pull out the super base row from that list that comes back at the right position, which is gonna be our current row. Now, when this runs for the very, very first time, this is gonna be zero. And if you are a coder or anything like that, then kind of the, the arrays have a, a kind of a, a zero index. So the very, very first uh, row that comes back will be zero, and there'll be one, two, three, four. So everything starts from a zero zero when it comes to a list. So, we're, so we know that current row is zero, so it's gonna pull out the very, very first one here. So just with this selected here, let's now go here and go to then the uh, state here, and we're gonna update the page state. 
and choose the add fields and we're going to go to chart data and what we're going to do is we're going to add to the list and then the value to add we now need to choose chart data so choose chart data and we now need to now start setting the actual fields of this so just choose add field now our title we now need to kind of go into the super base row now and pick out the value that we want to be for our title so this is going to be kind of like the day of the month so just with the value selected like that so I'm going to go down to action outputs and here is our stats output just select that available options and we're going to say the item at the index now that index is going to be a specific index so just select that and of course we need to say right it's the current row so we can go down now to our page state variable and we can say current row just like that now we can say okay well what is the super base field so we, we've kind of got the record now from super base now we need to go into that particular record and pull out the row that we're interested in so here it is here super base row fields and of course we are going to choose the period here okay because this is going to be kind of our label that's going to kind of run along the x-axis of our actual chart so what we can do now because it knows that this is a date and time field it means our available options is now kind of change we can say well let's get the date time format so if you remember back to kind of like the maybe if you've been watching the calendar kind of uh, series uh, in, in order to produce a calendar uh, using the, uh, the kind of the, the, the kind of the charts you will know that um, I've I, I use these kind of these custom formats here we now we, we're going to pick out the day itself so I can go down to custom and all I need to do is just pop a D in here like that and hit confirm and then that is now going to pick out the day of the month for the actual title Tool. So what I can now do, um, I'm going to grab hold of this and I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use all this again, say copy variable. Now we're going to go down and add the next field in. Now this is going to be the Y value that we're going to need. So this is kind of the, the kind of the main kind of chart area, not the, the one that we're overlaying. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the max super base kind of uh, sort of column there. So let's just choose the value. So let's just paste that in here. So item index, we're going to get the current row. We're going to go into our super base field. We're not going to use the period. We're going to use the max. And we're just going to hit confirm there like that. And we're going to do the same thing down here for the Y value too. OK, so it's the one that kind of overlays on the actual chart. So just select that. We're going to go here with the Y value and we're just going to select this here. We're going to paste this in here again, move down here. Instead of the period being the, the one that we're interested in, we're going to go to the min value like that and just hit confirm and then hit confirm again. So that is all nicely set up for us. So finally, then in this particular loop, we now need to increment our current row. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to plus here and go to add action. And I'm just going to go then to my state like that. I'm going to go update page state, set the fields, find the current row. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply just increment it by one here. That's all I need to do. Really quite straightforward. We're going to know this loop's going to keep going around with all of our records. As soon as this matches, the loop will break. And of course, what we then need to do is we need to re then set our page state variables back to zero again. So we just go to the plus here, go to add action. Let's go to then look for state again, update the page state, set the fields. So here's our current row. Let's just select that. Now, if you remember rightly, we uh, earlier, we when we set those page state variables up, we kind of set them zero as a default value. So I've got two choices here. I could then go here. I could either reset the value, which will return it back to zero again, or I can set Set the value itself i can do either one i'm just going to set the value and set and make sure it's set back to zero just like that i'm going to add the field in again because we're going to now do the number of rows because we can reset that back as well so just do then the set value and set that back to zero so that gets us right back to where we need um, for our page state variables so that is pretty much it that is all of our actions set up we've kind of now mapping kind of super base rows to our chart data custom data type and then we're passing that then into this custom widget we could just hit close like that and I actually think we are probably in a good I don't think I've forgotten anything but I think we're in a good position where we can actually fire this up hit the get stats and I'm hoping that what we'll see is that data then reflected into this particular chart so let's go into test mode and try that out okay just one thing before we do test this you'll notice here that I've, I've still got the amber up here and what this is really just telling us is that I haven't actually compiled the kind of the custom widgets so just make sure that you just move over here go to the Custer, the actual column chart here and just make sure you hit the little compilation option there that's going to go away it's going to do its thing it's probably going to take uh, a minute or two just to get that kind of compiled and then once that's then compiled then I know that my test mode which you can just see here is uh, kind of preparing itself in the background that I can do it then an instant reload on that
that and I then should pick up that particular custom uh, widget that should be compiled. Okay, so there we are. They're all good, we're all green up there. Let's move back to the test mode itself. Let's open that session. I'm gonna have to do a quick instant reload on this because things have changed my project. Let's give it a quick reload here. Okay, so there we go. So I should just be able to now hit the get stats and I'm hopefully I will see this populated with data. Here we go. There it is. Perfect, works first time. So all of that data is coming back then from uh, Superbase, which is looking really pretty good here. You can see here that um, we can do obviously further more customization on this, but um, hopefully that should uh, help you in your journey of connecting sync fusion charts to Superbase in this quite simple example, but you can see you can just build on this now to obviously make improvements for your own particular application. So hopefully you enjoy this extended walkthrough here on using sync fusion. Um, and of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please do obviously like the video, really do appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to the channel as well. And of course, if you're watching this with inside the Digital Pros No Code Academy, then uh, thank you for being a member and uh, thank you for following along in these particular videos. And these are all kind of community type videos. The community is kind of spoken and asking for uh, me to provide these type of examples. So I'm more than willing to help. So until the next video, I'll catch you soon.